on the next episode of Sip, Suds, and Smokes. Today's show is a wine episode. Well, the wines we're going to be discussing today, Chateau Amoth du Barry, Cuvée Montloup, 2015, Chateau Franc Magnus, 2014. I thought you were going to have Maury do this. Oh, make okay. Maury okay. do it. What no, Maury do? <laughs> He's doing a good Maury job did. murdering it. Okay, you do the next one. Okay, thank you. The next one is Chateau Tire Pay Diem. That's 2015. Then we have the 2018 Hor Seri Petit Verdot from Bordeaux. You know, that's a that's a big assumption. She might just be popular. Well, she might. Next, the 2019 Le Invincible Chateau Le Doc AOC Bordeaux. And finally, we have the 2015 Chateau Les Canaux. We'll be right back after this break. Almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Yes, it's sippin' time again. Hello and welcome to this Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. We, ha- we never discussed the, you know, the, the sexy time. The sexy I would say time. that was good in life. It's well, good. I don't know about sexy time. Your well, wife's maybe at, not for her, but your it's good wife, for me. Your wife's out of town. I guess yeah. this is her sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> She's a thousand miles away. She's having sexy time. <laughs> so mean. So mean. I sent her with my daughter as a chaperone. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out. I, I yeah yeah, <laughs> I know that kid. Yeah, she's she's the one you want to watch. You know, out for yeah. No, mm. no, you're doomed. Well, almost everything good in life we discuss here. Yeah, almost. Yeah, there's some things that were prevented from by the uh, codes and standards of broadcasting. <laughs> so, all right. Well, this is Made Man Bob, and enjoying me today for this episode are good old God Denise. Good morning, gentlemen. And Made Man Maury. Good morning, Bob. Excited to be here in the basement to stomp some grapes today. And good old boy Army. Thank you, Bob. Can you taste the toes? Can you taste the toes? Toe jam. No, Jim. Definitely. I'm glad they don't. A lot of wineries don't do the old style anymore. I I can enjoy a wine just perfectly well without tasting grandma's feet. That's not what I've heard. I've heard you're like into feet. I heard that's your thing, you creepy. There's a term for that, right? Shrimping? Foot, foot is it fetish? Shrimping? Yeah. I, I is it shrimping? I just learned this the why other day. Why do you day. know that? I don't know I'm, why I know I'm this. I'm now creeped but, out. But uh, apparently her meat just... Uh, Brings that out in you? Yeah. Shrimping. No, no. Did you, notice, did you notice that as soon as she said that and we started busting her on it, and all of a sudden Maury got real excited. <laughs> oh, I had yeah. to turn his damn mic down. Right? He's breathing heavy. <laughs> shrimping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a little scary, but yeah. our sip segments are all about uh, wine, distilled spirits, tea, coffee, and pretty much anything else you can drink. So today's show is a wine episode, and here's yes, the one. If wines. you couldn't tell about the discussion with the the feet and the, the stomping and the yeah, well, it because could be a Kool Aid episode. You know, that's true. You never know. George Jones. There you go. Well, the wines we're going to be discussing today, we're going to attempt to... Is it com- Jim Jones? Jim Jones. Jim Jones, Jim yeah. Jones. Yeah. We're going to attempt to completely murder the French language, so... Uh, it's dead to us now. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is uh, Chateau Lamothe du Berry, Cuvée Mont Loup, 2015. Uh, we have the Chateau Franc Magnus, 2014. I thought you were going to have Maury do this. Oh, Make okay. Maury okay. do this. What no, he's, he's doing a good <laughs> job murdering it. Okay. You do the next one. Okay. Thank you. The next one is Chateau Tire Pay Diem. Uh, that's 2015. Then we have the 2018 Hor Seri Petit Verdot from Bordeaux. 
You know, that's a that's a big assumption. She might just be popular. Well, she might. There might be a reason. But uh, next on our our hit list today will be the 2019 Le Invincible Chateau Le Doc AOC Bordeaux, and finally we have the 2015 Chateau Les Canaux. And our, it wasn't, I don't think you were so bad. And our, how our apologies to everyone in France for yeah. the, you know, massacre. Um, but it wasn't, is, it wasn't bad. Yeah, we're good old boys. This is as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> we know our wine. We just can't pronounce the wine. So we're going to have uh, Harm now tell us about our sips ratings. I wish I had rehearsed this, but I'm going to try anyway. We'll be tasting and discussing these wines and rating them with these sips. Just ratings. don't do Pepe Le Pew. He's been he's been blacklisted. Well, it's, you can he's been be French and less he's rapey. Been canceled, yeah. You can be French and less rapey. I mean, there's a lot of half skunk, half cats out there. Mm. It's hard, it's hard to tell it. which one he is. Pepe Le Pew didn't take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, look, I don't want to be in all the whole cancel culture thing, but I would be uncomfortable watching that. That that cartoon with my my little little girl. Really? Yeah, because Pepe Le Pew was a sort of a monster man, sort of a monster. I loved him, but listen, that, that again, I am a monster. There are yeah, monsters I was going to say, I am a monster. But as Your a woman, me, perhaps yeah. he prepared young females for the monsters that are actually <laughs> yeah. out there. Yeah, so we grew up. Them. We already yeah. knew. Run, yeah. cat, run. Yeah. <laughs> If you see a dude coming to you with a thick French accent and a white stripe down his back, run like hell. There you go. Okay. Let's let's move on. <laughs> we'll hey, be using our five minutes sounds. and fifty eight seconds in already in the toilet. That's New okay. record. <laughs> uh, so uh, here are our ratings now. Un gorge. Give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. De Gorge. Nice. But what else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? Trois Gorge. Hmm. Intrezant. What was this again? Is Intrezant French or German? It's German. I don't remember. Uh. What is it? Cat. Cat. <laughs> Seeps. Or no, Seep. Not Cat. Seep. Well, it's a Gorge. Gorge. Cat Gorge. Let's keep this a secret to ourselves, Cher. Pour me another. That's I just threw up my glass a little. S- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not doing Cajun. Sank Gorge. Oh, my. I was unaware anything could be this good. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Thank the only, God it's over. Yeah. The only Cajun he knows is <laughs> let him do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's all he knows. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. It's. Uh, yeah. I tried. I should have. I should have rehearsed. Great. I'm sorry. I have French friends who could have helped me with this, but I didn't even look at the script before I got here, man. Phone a friend. French fries don't count as friends. No, no those are freedom fries, my friend. Those are freedom fries. Let's talk about cancel culture. Remember that one. I do, I, I do. do. What did he say? Shut up. Suppress your defecation. That's what I thought. <laughs> you were trying to get all like artsy here and talk about wine. It's like, you know, but you're you're taking it straight into the garbage heap. I mean The smell of the vineyard. Oh. Like inhaling birth. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Birth? Yeah. Oh wow. Wine is sunlight. Held together by water. The poetic wisdom of the Italian physicist, philosopher, and stargazer, Galileo Galilei. You can't argue with Alan Rickman. If you where argue you with Alan Rickman, Rickman doing this? I will stab where did you. you. I, dude, I love Rickman, but where did you get that? Bottle shock. Was that, I totally His forgot. second greatest I movie ever. I don't remember that part in the movie. His second greatest movie ever after Die Hard. Yeah, My favorite bottle, Christmas bottle movie killed, of all. Killed Merlot in America. Nobody buys Merlot after that. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Yeah. All I can tell if you is... If you want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So we move on. Denise? So let's move on. So let's go to uh, Denise, who's going to tell us a little bit about the wines that we're tasting today. Oh, these new style Bordeaux? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Well, Bordeaux's new reds are challenging long-held perceptions of the region. Fresh and fruit-forward in style, today's new style Bordeaux reds explore historic varieties, unexpected blends, and a contemporary approach that includes vegan and sulfite-free offerings. The evolution of Bordeaux style and practices reflects the region's commitment to manage climate change. With more than 65% of the winery certified sustainable and respond to dynamic consumer preferences. These new style Bordeaux reds and crafted so they, wait a minute, is that correct? Are. These are. Yeah. Sorry. The, oh, no, it's cool. Good. These new style Bordeaux reds are crafted so they can be consumed young and still retain aging potential. To accomplish this, they rely on several new methods from the vineyard to the cellar. First, the grapes are harvested at the peak of ripeness to retain young berry fruit aromas. Second, shorter and gentler maceration cycles reduce tannic extraction while retaining subtlety. Third, less time in oak barrels reduces woody aromas in favor of more immediate approachability. Winemakers are also opting for less new oak and larger 500-liter barrels as compared to the traditional 225-liter size. To preserve fresh... No oh, no, wait. Did I do that right? I lost my place. I know you didn't drink that much <laughs> To preserve freshness, we the period. <laughs> Finally, the most unconventional makers eliminate wood aging entirely in favor of alternative and neutral vessels such as stainless steel tanks. Amphorae? Is Amphorae. that correct? Amphorae. Amphorae. Uh, three different? Okay. Somebody pick one. It's amphora for singular, amphorae for plural. Amphorae. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amphorae and terracotta jars that promote a lively expression with natural microoxygenation and ovoid vats for maturation on fine lees. A respect for terroir is endemic to Bordeaux winemaking culture. Less is more for many producers who practice a minimal intervention approach designed to maximize the expression of place. Techniques include site-specific parcel management and micro vinifications that preserve unique characteristics. All gravity transfers and gentle pump overs, not to be confused with a coffee pour over. The result, authentic wines that proudly deliver an ancestral terroir at affordable price points. When she said pump over, Maury got excited again. <laughs> We don't discuss sexy time here, Bob. That's oh, right. No Bob. sexy time. I'm going to have to get the garden hose out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to, but, you know, you know, we got to do something. We're trying to do a family show here. So, oh, yeah. Oh, the family show. wine show and whiskey show yeah. and cigar show. Yeah. Yeah. We, we introduce the kids to all the good vices. Yeah. Well, somebody's got to. I mean, they're just going to pick it up on the street if, if they don't. Well, you know, I learned all that stuff on the street. And look at you. I'm I'm accomplished now. I learned all the Slum, stuff you should not know. Slum dog millionaire right That's here. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm buying that. That just uh, well, yeah. I, I I think my parents planted books around the house to let me know. Yeah, I mean, you are the one who you know looks at wine and bring us some fresh wine. No more of this old stuff. I'm just saying. Yeah, but. You're a complete bastard and we'll hate you. We'll be back. We'll be back. And we're back. We're just sitting here watching Harm take selfies of himself and the camera refusing to click them. You know, them. my life is on Instagram now because of freaking social media freaks. You know, Apple has a subroutine in their operating system that will not allow that picture to... They be probably, taken. It will probably be deleted. Or yeah. They, they just they looks at it and it goes, oh, it's hot. Oh, no, no, no. Moving on. Moving on. Well, let's have Denise tell us about our first wine. Great. So, Chateau, Chateau La Moth du Berry, La Cuvée Montloup, 2015, 100% Merlot, 13% ABV. Merlot? Merlot. 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 The Chateau practices precision viticulture aimed at respecting the environment. The wine is aged in stainless steel with no chemical inputs or sulfites added during the harvest or the vinification. The vines have an average age of 25 years. The estate also includes a resort hotel. Let's go. Should you want to stay overnight. So this is an interesting start to this lineup, I think, today. Um, I guess we can talk about the color. The color is pretty similar in all of them. This one's sort of in the middle, actually. It's not real dark. It's not real light. It's, it's a beautiful little it's plum color. Opaque. Can't read through this. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's nice. So the nose was really interesting. Um, 
you know, it's described originally with a lot of sweet berries or blueberries, powdered sugar. Those are all very sweet. And although I get a mixed berry um, sort of nose, uh, as opposed to sweet, I got like a little metallic for some reason on the nose. And It is. I agree with you. Denise. And I couldn't quite figure out something that followed behind the berries. And I, first it's, I thought it was like cocoa a powder. It's cocoa tobacco, powder. maybe yeah. a slight okay. little That's campfire or mm. burning leaves. I just, I couldn't quite yeah, place it. Yeah, there's an earthiness. But it was to really... Me, earthiness would be a good to me, it went but medicinal. pleasant. It went, no, I like it. It went more medicinal. For you? Yeah. Yeah. No, I actually liked it. No, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's, it's, a, it's an unpleasant odor because there are several, you yeah. know. You want to talk about medicinal and pleasant? Give me some Lafroig, baby. Oh, <laughs> well, sure. Sure. We all know he knows about medicinal odors, but, you know, that's yeah. just, he doesn't like cocaine. He just likes the smell. Yes, that's true. I, yeah, I thought the palate was really clean. Um, definitely got the sweetness on the palate, for sure. And a little tangy, just yeah, a little slightly, tart. Little slightly. Tart. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, at first I wrote tart, and then I went back to it, and I'm thinking, hmm, I think it's actually tangy. So tart, tangy. Nice. The finish I thought was medium, um, kind of coated the back of the tongue a little nicely. So, yeah, this is pleasant, really enjoyable. Yeah, it's got a good body to it. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, the, these wines, we don't really discuss the exact MSRPs I, I, on these. I'm, but a, I'm, a, I'm disagreeing with you on the body. I think it's on the watery side. I agree with Harm. I think it's yeah. light bodied up front, up front on the palate, not on the back. I didn't, you didn't let me get to the end of it yet. Fine. Up front. We have to interrupt you. What's, what's, what's the point front, of the show? It's the, right around like the U region of the tongue, sides and front. Toward the back of the palate is when it starts watering down. But, again, we don't go over the exact prices of these, but, you know, I think the most expensive wine we have here is $20, $25. I mean, they're... They're meant this to be... This is Florida, 30 bucks. Yeah, they're meant to... Well, your store, sure. They're well, meant my store, 50 for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. They're supposed to be, you know, wider and more approachable, and 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 they definitely are. But um, yeah, it's it. I I thought the front body, the front of the palate picks up the body on the back of the palate. It 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 comes down a little bit, and I'm with you. It's it's not so much tart as it's just a little tangy, a little sharp on the palate. But again, very very nice nose, lots of sweetness on it. See, there's a I have a problem with it. It's it's a hundred percent Merlot, but it does not taste like typical Merlot to it me. It doesn't taste anything like a Merlot. No, there's, it's, I'm not picking up the, the varietal characteristics. If they want to no. drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. There you go. So they talk about stainless steel uh, um, aging here, no chemicals, no sulfites, and there's nothing wrong with that if you get the wine to market soon enough and it's drunk soon enough. But you can get infections when you don't use no when you use no sulfites at all. So I don't know. That, I don't think this wine is tainted, but there could be some other microbial um, incursions here. I don't this know if is, I agree with you. I just think it's a it's a light entry level wine. It's hmm. got a light body. It's not overly complex. It's, it's see, but that, that don't make it into something it's not. No, but that 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 metallic and medicinal thing that could be from other microbes besides the yeast that should be there. Not, and the lactic bacteria. We're not talking about your sexy microbes. We're talking yeah. about the wine. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I I don't dislike it. It's a quaffable wine. It's just I don't mind a little bit of sulfite to make keep sure the other things aren't growing in my wine. But it's it's uh, the the flavors are there. Denise said blueberries. It's got this um, it's got this slight sweetness to it, especially when we first started. Then then it goes earthier, and it's but there's a little medicinal hint. And I, I, I thought it was enjoyable. I think this is a great wine to have with some cheese mm-hmm. and inexpensive, good value. Yeah. I, I do. The only thing I would – I mostly agree with what Denise said. I thought the finish was pretty short. Yeah. I agree. Mm. Yeah. You're right, Mark. You're right. The finish is short. It I just kind of drops off. Mm. Yeah. This – I mean, again, it's – it is well below $20. Well below. So it's – you know, it, you're only going to – you're not going to – get the greatest wine you've ever had unless but, you're in a restaurant in south florida and then it's a 50 dollars wine <laughs> yeah oh yeah oh it could be 100 yeah, yeah. <laughs> please on south beach 150 yeah. um but yeah well i mean well done got got a, a nice nose to it and i a, like i like the style that they're trying finished. to do this less oak and yeah and i'm that's the thing that i'm fi- i'm enjoying about this whole series is what they're doing with the bordeaux and trying to make it more approachable i think i think that's a brilliant move 
you know, when people think Bordeaux, they're thinking, you know, you know, sitting by a fire in a leather wing back chair, some, you know, rich old white guy drinking a ten thousand dollar bottle of wine. Which I, 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 I don't I, hate I, that. I don't I hate aspire that. to be I, one I, day. Yes, you know. Too. I just not making it, unfortunately. But I, um I want to be there too, but it's not so white. Yeah, That's but these well, you know, you're Jamoka, you know. But you know, it's uh, it's exciting to see them going in a different direction, and it's also exciting to see them starting and you know to really embrace you know the new viticultural techniques, you know, trying you know the biodiversity and 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 trying to you know make them organically and everything. I, I I think it's I think it's a good move. I think it's a real good move. That's it's it's the old techniques that are new again. Basically. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. That's Bio exactly dynamic what it is. and uh, and no no, no uh, minimal handling. Yeah. Well, I don't think they had the word biodynamic. No, no back pesticides then. and no, um, yeah, and, and organic. Yeah. And I don't think uh, you know I wouldn't be able to pronounce biodynamic in French anyway. So, biodynamic, biodynamic, la, la. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, yeah. la. do biodynamic or <laughs> something. Go, so, um, but yeah, a lovely little wine there. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna rate the Chateau de Mont du Barry La Cuvier Mont Loup 2015. Sorry for the. Destroying of the language. That's uh, pretty good. Two what sips. Isn't that nice? Yeah, excellent. I mean, for the money, great. What a wine. So let's move on to our next one. We're going to have Harm tell us about that one. Well, thank you, Bob. Today's uh, second offering is the Chateau Franc Magnus 2014. It's a blend of 90% Merlot, 10% Cab Franc, and it's bottled at 13.5% ABV. Oh, you were finished. Will allow me to retort. I have only just begun, Bob. I okay. have only just begun. Then keep going. The production of each vintage is adapted to the season's climactic conditions, with adjustments made in the vineyard and the vinification, as well as blending the best to capture the natural conditions of that season. Now, this is total uh, marketing speak because I believe every winemaker does this, unless they're making freaking factory wine, like, you know, some wines I won't mention. Something in a box. Yeah, yeah. something in a box. So the wine is vinified in stainless steel and cement vessels, and then aged in 70% barrique and 30% single-use oak barrels. So this wine is very different from the other ones we've had. So 70% huge barriques and 30% single-use barrels, which means they've been used once before for wine. And uh, so it's, this is nice. And the wood is immediately apparent uh, yes. in contrast. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful opaque purple. I just hit my mic with the glass. I'm sure the engineers could take that out. And the nose. This is huge berries and plums right up front. And underneath, I'm getting some cedar. There's a mineral note, like a like little black tar almost. It just wonderfully complements the fruit. And on the palate, let's try this again. Mm, mm. A little chew. It's definitely got a little chew to it. Yeah. More of those plums. Uh, gorgeous current coming in. There's a hint of spice. I'm not sure where that's coming from. The cap well, the Cabernet Franc should give some spice, but it's, it's kind of muted compared to what I'd expect. So with 10% Cap Franc, I would expect more spice, but this is more delicate. Um, there's a little licorice on the back end. Uh, nice, silky tannins. Great mouthfeel. And light grip. I wish it lasted longer. It's sh a shortish to medium finish. Um, I just want it to last longer. What do you guys think? Yeah, I what agree with that expecting? finish. The, I thought the finish was Wonderful. short but pleasant. What are you playing, Bob? Your sound effect <laughs> is so muted. What were you expecting? Thunderbird? <laughs> Oh, it's no. not a classic Merlot either. No, no. It's uh, no. it'd be Again. hard to nail down as a Merlot. You can new style. You, know? you can nail yeah. it down as old world. Yeah, but um, but definitely not Merlot. I'm sorry. These aren't California wines. No. These no, are no, these no, aren't no, the California fruit bomb Merlots. No, definitely not. But I thought the nose was really nice on this. Um, I got stewed fruits on the nose. Um, that nice sort of hint of barnyard that. I always like that. I always think French the minute that I get that on the nose. I don't get that much barnyard. I got this one. just a so, hint, but it's hint. nice. It's I keep back coming there. back to it, though. I want to keep drinking this one. Yeah. Okay. I thought it had enough spice, actually, her meat. Um, I really? thought it coated the tongue really nicely. Mm -hmm. I like the spiciness of it. I love the um I'm from soft India, tannins. Denise. There's not enough spice in oh, the Oh, this wine. is true. Okay. You're right. 
You need spice bombs. I need spice bombs. For sure. I've always thought of you as one of the Spice Girls. If that. What about you, Maury? What scary you spice. Scary spice. Yeah, yeah that was scary say. spice. <laughs> I like this wine. I thought it was nice. I thought of the bunch today. This was one of the best. Um, I thought it was beautifully well made. It had much more body. Again, I, I tend to and prefer I love their some label too. Beautiful label. Oak yeah. And wood in my wine. Uh, and again, it's got the oak there. I think the cement vessel had a little minerality that you can pick up. Um, I agree with you. The finish was medium. I would have liked for it to be just a little bit longer, but it just mm-hmm. keeps you coming back for more. So I really thought this was well done. I think it improved nicely with air and time in the glass. Oh, this, this is, was a much more closed wine. This opened up vastly in the last hour and a when half. When we we've first it poured it, it was closed, and now it's uh, it's drinking nicely. So Face I'm, the microphone while you talk. I'm yeah. quite happy with it. No, that's where I got the barnyard. Um, after yeah. it sat in the glass for a while. Really? At first, okay. I didn't get it at all. So it was opening nicely. Yeah, that wasn't in my notes, but I guess maybe you're right. With uh, As it opens up, you get more of that. Yeah. No, but it's, it's very well made. I mean, the cedar on it is the first thing that leaped out. Nobody else got licorice? No. no hint of licorice but on the it? Cedar is, the cedar is very ethereal. It's subtle. very, very, very it's top subtle. note. Very it's subtle. Way up high. Mm-hmm. Um, on the palate, definitely currants and spiciness. Um it's got a really nice tannin to it, not a cloying, drying tannin, but, you know, just that bit of body to it. It gives enough to give it structure. Mm-hmm. It's, got a, it's got a nice light grip. It's not, it's not something that's going to dry your mouth out. No. And, and honestly, if you get something that's got a lot more grip than this, it's going to be a lot more money. And you're it, gonna, but you're going to want to have that with food. Yeah, because, you know, again, again, this one is well below Twenty dollars. In fact, it's this, I believe it's the same price as the first one. So, yeah, that, I'm surprised. This is yeah, a real value for the money. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a it's, this is, this is definitely a winner. So we're going to be uh, rating the Chateau Front Magnus 2014 a well deserved three sips. And honestly, if we sat here for another hour, I might bump it up a little because it, it keeps. Yeah, it keeps getting better in the glass. It is it's definitely absolutely. improving. With with time, it's since we rated yeah, a really really nice. So, all right, let's go to Maury for our next one. Thank you, Bob. The next uh, offering is the Chateau Tire Pay Diem, 2015. It's 95 percent Merlot. It can't be Tire. There's no accent mark over the e, unless Bob just didn't type it. I don't know. Look at the bottle. Look at the label. Five percent Cab Sauv and comes in at 13 percent ABV. David and Helene Barreau. Took their small vineyard in 97, and the grapes have been organically grown since 2008 and are harvested by hand before they are pressed. Each plot is harvested and fermented separately. Grapes undergo a short 8- to 12-day cool maceration for a soft extraction. The wine is aged for 8 to 10 months in concrete tanks and is bottled without systematic filtration. The average age for the vines is 10 to 15 years. So this uh, is of similar color to all the other offerings. It's got a nice uh, ruby color, leaning towards purple. Um, on the nose, I thought this had one of the nicest Cotton nose candy. today. It's bright. It's fresh fruit. There's definitely raspberries on the nose, red red fruit. You got cotton candy? Yes, very sweet yeah. for me. Cotton yeah. candy. I, I thought, didn't get the cotton candy. I thought it just might now. be yeah. a very lightly toasted marshmallow, and then I went back to it and thought, wow, that's super sweet cotton for candy me, for I me. For me, cherry and raspberry and fresh red fruit, but really bright. See, when we when I first taste, smelled this, it was muted as heck. I couldn't get anything. But now this sat in the glass, everything you guys have said is right. I'm getting Denise's cotton candy. I'm getting your Maury's cherries. They're there. This is bright. It's, it's not cherries. sweet on the palate. Yeah. I've taken Maury's cherry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got a nice mouth feel. Okay, and if anything, it's a, <laughs> a little Bob. bit dry on the palate. But again, you get the fruit notes. You get red fruit, plums, currant, um, little herbalness, as uh, Harm pointed out. And then it just sort of uh, drifts away. I thought the finish was short. Um, Too short for me. Yeah. For me, the highlight of this is is the nose. I could nose it for a long time. I don't know about all day like Bob would, but I could definitely sit and enjoy it just simply mm-hmm. nosing it. What do you think, Harm? I'm going with you guys. I think this is wonderful. Uh, this is for. I mean, like these are value priced wines that are so easily drinkable. I like the fact that they do individual parcels. I mean, it takes more time and effort to do it the way they're doing it. And they're still giving you good value. 
Um, cool maceration, exactly is perfectly done. Uh, the fact that there's no filtration surprises me, or, or very little filtration, because I would expect um, this to be a little. Maybe, well, I don't know. Are my teeth purple? Maybe this is it. Yeah, I well, mean, there's no cloudiness. That's for no, sure. No, there's no cloudiness at no. all. I mean, it's 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 got a gray color. Really, um, really well done. And the fresh red fruits, I, I thought at first it was very muted, but now that it's gotten some air that's mm-hmm. bright, and there's there's a touch of uh, cedar. Just or, a hint. Something else, just a hint. And it's not going metallic, but there's like a, a good acidic component on the nose here that I really enjoy. And it's rich. It's, you it's, know, it it's, might just be the mouth grill you're wearing. Maybe you need to take that out before you start drinking wine. Yeah. I was going to wear my Snoop. Invisalign today. Yeah. Yeah. No. Ah, everything's metallic. Quick. What are they called? They're not called grills. What are, they, are they called grills? Yeah. I think so. Mm. I have some stores in the Grills with a Z. I just don't go there. You should get a grill. I should get a grill. Sales would go grill. up. Diamond. Diamond grill. Sales would go up. Yes, definitely diamond. If it was a nice one, I'm just saying. Maybe like with a little Chanel logo on the front. Would be really Louis cool. Vuitton. Yeah. Definitely. Little Wayne used to live in our neighborhood for the uh, for the fine spirits store, and then he got out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He decided I've had enough of this guy. So <laughs> but yeah, this is. I mean, again, this is another one that is. You know, it was, it was a nice little wine. We opened it up, and it's it's significantly improved. Um, I, I I'm getting you know again. The, the th- I'm, I'm with harm. The minimal filtration. I. Find that hard to believe because I expect it to be cloudy. Yeah, it's ex- crystal. I mean, it's it's got it's got a beautiful dark color, but there's there's no haziness to it at all. It's got a beautiful rim. Um, it might throw some more sediment in a few years. It's but this, it's this wine very very bright. It, it's gotten brighter with time, which I didn't expect. Um, red fruit, minerals again. That cedar top note. That's the first thing I got. That's blown off a bit though. Cedar blew off. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't as. It, it was much stronger when We're we first pour opened a little bit it. More. I um, want some more, but and and you know, really nice palate. Oh. It's got a great palate. I just wished uh, the finish longer. was a little bit yeah. longer, but I guess that makes you go back for more. You know what I get <laughs> on sure. the back? Uh, just a slight little cola note. Cola. Yeah. Well, we're going to be rating the Chateau Tierpe three sips. Interesting. Hey, and we're back, and we uh, just finished uh, talking about the Chateau Tierpe 2015 DM. Um, I'm not sure if we actually got the sips rating in, but a well-deserved three sips. Interesting. Um, again, for the money, fantastic value. Yeah. That that one is, I think, a, a, a couple of bucks more than the first two. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing some interesting work. So we're going to go to our next one, which is... The Chateau Orsire Petit Verdot Bordeaux 2018. It's 100% Petit Verdot at 14.5% ABV. Founded in 1844 by Pure Conard, Orsire Petit Verdot is made with no oak aging, which is very, very unusual for French wine, but certainly for Bordeaux. Petit Verdot is an old red grape variety, having originated in the Medoc and traditionally used in Bordeaux blends. And interestingly, the bottle has a wooden label on it, which is... And now you should apologize for, for uh, slaughtering their ancestor's name. But, well, you know, what do you want from me? I think you called him Pure Doc or something like that. It's not Canard. Yeah. It's Quan Card, but whatever. I didn't say Cardan, so I mean, you know, you know cheap, cheap cologne. What do you want from me? Um, on the color of it, it's a uh, sort of a dark, purpley, burgundy, a little bit of ruby around the edge. This is another one that has really opened up with uh, with some I, time. I cannot believe how much this one has improved. I, I'm giving my score or uh, an increased rating on this one now. Yeah, the the fruit has really, really opened up. It took quite a while, though. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, took longer than you. Beyond an hour. Yeah, it was it was all pepper for me when we opened it, and a little one note. But now the fruit is there, so it's it's and like, it's flowers, dude. It's flowers. Yeah, this is violets. It's like a it's like a summer field 
with wildflowers growing. A little bit of pepper is still there. That that undernote of the spice is still there. Lilacs too, violets and lilacs. This is gorgeous. Let's have a sip. This uh, these notes were not the first well, the first time we we smelled this wine, or we we opened it up, and I, I, I even tried giving some air. This this wine did not show at all on the nose, but now I, I could smell this all night. And it, I think an aerator, like a Venturi or something like that, would have killed this, but you just have to let it sit in the glass for a while. Yeah, I think it might have been Pour a little bit much. Pour it and walk away. Because it's, it's very delicate. Mm. Mm. But, yeah, the fruit is there up front. I'm still having trouble identifying the fruit. It's all about flowers for me here. It's, I agree with you, Hermit. I'm getting, like, red fruit. You know, like red kind of stewed fruit. Yeah. Um. I'm getting a little bit of apple note on it. Um, okay. This has got the most body, I think, of all the ones we've had so far. The tannins yeah. are definitely there. This is the more, I'm not going to say this is traditional Bordeaux, because it is not, but it is leaning more towards that with the tannin in this. I don't think there's very many 100% Bord- Petit Verdot yeah. made in Bordeaux. Yeah, especially something. That's with, something they do in California. Something with this body, yeah. Um, this, I mean, this thing's got some body to it. I think you'd lay this thing down for for a good couple of years and and really see where where this one's going. I, this one's fantastic. I, I love mean, the grip. Yeah, this has got a good. Still, the sh- the finish is short. For, it's medium. It's it's not. You know, again, we're not. This is but, not oh, a five thousand dollar. It coats your mouth, front, back, Definitely teeth, coach your under mouth. the tongue, top of the tongue. Yeah, there's there's ten and galore in this, but it but it fades fast, harm. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. short, but it's not no, it's not long. It's, no. it's it's not it's the short end of medium for you. Yeah, again, you know, you're you're getting what you pay for here, but the quality on the at, at front is really great. I think that it's got enough that so you could beautiful. age it, and it would be interesting to see where the fruit evolves with the age. I think the tannin would definitely because it's not like you said it's not a it's not a long deep tannin it's right up front I mean it grabs you but it's not going to age long though it doesn't know. have any wood tannins no to give no it it's not I mean longevity. you're not putting it down for twenty years but I'd I'd say give this thing three or four more years you might re- I mean it really might even change more I think I think the fruit might come out so I, I'm more. surprised they got so much out of this with zero oak aging I mean oh, I've had I'm, some I've I had can't some believe steel here's the thing there's mm-hmm. no oak aging and their label is made of wood. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I, now we, we know, the, now we we know where the wood went. We used all the oak on yeah. the labels. Yeah. We have nothing left to age the wine in. <laughs> oh, oh, look at the labels. Aren't they fantastic? Oh, they're beautiful. All right, let's put the wine in the... Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sacre bleu. So they used all the oak for the labels. Uh, the But I, they, I think that they have... They don't say here, but I, I'm, a, I'm guessing it's whole cluster... Because there's some, there's some tannin coming from the stems and the seeds here. That's I think it's I would gotta get, be whole yeah, cluster pressed. I think you're right. They're not destemming these. This is so wonderfully what made. I can't believe this is a hundred percent petit verdot, and I can't believe it's it's um, no oak. Mm-hmm. I know. Wow, look at those those flowers just keep coming. The flowers back. are really great. The whole earthiness of it with the flowers is really fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think on the nose and the palate. That's what it is. You hit it right on yeah. the head. And, it's the and again, that improves so much from when we first. Maybe it was whole cluster flowers because there's really not a lot of fruit. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, the fruit the fruit is muted here. No, this would stand up to a lot of nice dishes, though. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, but again, another one that's a surprise. Mm-hmm. We, you know, we let it sit for a while, and 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 it never ceases to amaze me how all the beverages that we discuss on this show can evolve with oxygen. You know, it it doesn't. The whiskey show. I mean, it doesn't change as much and as often with whiskey, but we get it. Um, but with with wine, uh, sometimes it's just dramatic. Sometimes there's no change at all. Sometimes it it nose dives. But this, the, yeah, that's the thing I find. Like lower end wines, grocery store wines, you give them this much air, yeah, and they, they die. die. Yeah, they die. They turn to vinegar. Yeah, these are not. These are these are getting they, better. These are doing the exact opposite. Yeah. And that's 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 the fascinating thing about you know dealing with wine and whiskey and 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 you know other beverages is you know how they evolve. So. Well, we're going to be rating the uh, the Orsery Petit Verdot, Bordeaux, 100% Petit Verdot, a well-deserved three sips. So we're going to have uh, Maury come in and tell us about 
How would you rate this one, Miles? Well, usually they start you on the lines of learning disabilities, but this one is pretty damn good. I can't hear the sound okay. effects, man. You got raise yeah, the that was a little on. muted, but uh, all right. Well, thank you. The it's next, the, it was muted like the nose on the fr that second wine, the, or the third wine, the first. Let me time. turn it up. How would you rate this one, Miles? Well, usually they start you on the lines of learning disabilities, but this one is pretty damn good. <laughs> the next wine is Le Invincible Chateau Le Duc, AOC Bordeaux, 2019. La Duc, I think. La Duc. Or La Duc. It is 100% Merlot from a single plot and comes in at 14% ABV. This wine is a product of a single parcel harvest with no added sulfites and natural malolactic fermentation without added lactic bacterium. That's a mouthful. So this wine, again, has a beautiful deep purple garnet color. Deep purple? Richie Blackmore make this wine? Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> I knew I liked it. Again, it's got a beautiful nose. It's really uh, opened up quite a bit on the nose. I get a lot of red fruit, definitely some floral, a um, little touch of violet and lilac again, um, maybe even a little bit of black currant. Uh, it's really uh, amazing how this nose has changed and, and opened up. Quite I get more lilac, lilac than violet on your, this, but I, I agree. I think you're right, you're right, right on on this whole note. It's got a really nice palate. It's definitely more fruit forward. This is this wine of the bunch I thought was the most fruity. I uh, got lots of red fruit on the palate, um, which wasn't necessarily the case with some of the earlier ones where you got it on the nose, but not so much on the palate. This one's got a lot of cherry, especially on the finish. Yes. It's got raspberry. It's got a really nice mouthfeel. Um, it's definitely softer on the tannins than, say, the previous wine. Uh, this one's really ready to drink. Doesn't really need a lot of time in the bottle, considering how young it is. It's remarkable. But um, but air in the glass definitely helped it quite a bit. And I thought it had a nice medium finish. Um, this could definitely be an all-day sipper out by the pool. Uh, I find it refreshing, fresh, bright, um, kind of not really old-world style. Mm -hmm. And again, I wouldn't necessarily guess it to be 100% Merlot. It, uh, it's a little atypical for Merlot. I mean, it's, I think it's more variety correct than some of the others we've True. had today. But I agree, I agree with but you. But different than American Merlot, no, for completely. sure. Um, but I have tiny hints of vanilla and cocoa as well, which is which I expect from some on of the those. nose. Yeah, yeah, um, you definitely get. The, I mean, I think the for me anyway, the the floral um, nose, the entire bouquet of lilacs is just right there. Um, but if you take a second, there's like this, for me, a little hint of rose behind it. So Is I get it all this lilac, right. and then I get like this hint of like soft rose, rose water kind of thing. It's really, I'm really reaching for it. I'm still not beautiful for I'm me getting, and the pleasant. Black, the blackberries are overshadowing that. See, I get the wow. overshadowing of the berries, which it's not really overshadowing because I don't get a lot of floral necessarily on the palate. It's mainly all... Um, Are you saying there's rose berries. water on the palate? No, on the nose, oh, okay. on the back, right behind the lilacs. I can't reach it, and I, I get rose rose petals on on wine on a lot of you, stuff. You, you, that yeah. you tell me there's not there, but. but a lot of cherry on the finish. <coughs> cherry, Definitely. cherry, cherry. Yeah, yeah, but nice, really pleasant. It's it's red cherries. It's not black cherries. Absolutely red. red, red, red. Yeah, blood red. Absolute mm -hmm. blood red cherries. Now you make it sound gross. No, just yeah. you know, I don't know what to tell you. Blood red's his favorite color. Yeah, exactly. no, because I've been I've been reading vampire novels lately. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going there again. Oh, a friend of mine wanted to watch True Blood again, so I was like, oh, should we read the books? So blood red is not a good connotation. You're for thinking right the same now. thing as me. You can read. <laughs> <laughs> if I read very slowly, and audible, loud. audible books, paper or Kindle, uh, uh, Kindle. Mm -hmm. Kindle paper. I've got tons of hardbacks. I've got a huge library, but frankly, I have, everything's it's so much easier on Kindle and uh, Audible. I love Audible. That's in the car. But you know, I'm not doing a commercial for Audible here. But if you guys want to throw some money from Amazon, we'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is another one that was definitely changed with air. And hmm. the the grip is still there mm -hmm. after all that fruit. And after all that, uh, the floral note, 
The grip is still there. I really like it. Yep. Velvety mouthfeel. Bob, you were up there. Uh, yeah, it's it's the mouthfeel is there. It uh, the one we did before, there was much more tannin to it. But this this is you know the, the tannin's not there, but the body is set absolutely still there. I mean, um, there's tannin, just not as much as yeah, the last one. Yeah, not as much as the last one at all. Um, but the body is there. You know, there's there's you know it's it's solid, it's thick. Um, the fruit is there. The black currants are there. The flowers are huge. Um, on the palate, again, I, the cherries, 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 and it's it's got a it's got a you know a medium nice finish. Again, uh, for the money, hell, you can't beat this. No, it's lovely. Mm. Yeah, we. I'm, I'm very impressed that uh, with these new new style Bordeaux at these price points. I really am. I'm hoping some of these are going to be available in Florida because I've not seen any of these wines. Well, now, this one's slightly more than the others we've tried today, but nonetheless, it's still very approachable yeah. in terms of price. Yeah. Very reasonable. And for what, you, what you're getting is a tremendous value. And I, I love, you know, anybody can make a great $100 bottle, but I think uh, making a value price yeah. bottle and, and making it enjoyable and approachable is uh, uh, quite a feat. I'd rather go through 100 bottles and find that one that drinks like this for, you know, 10 or 15 or $20 than, you know, just go somewhere and just, you know, throw a couple of C notes on the Are you just trying to hurt me, man? Are you just, just say, what have you got? Is, I come to do your radio show and you sit there and insult me. Hey, <laughs> spend the money. <laughs> you, you as you just as much as me love this. Love looking for the I one. Know, love I looking know. for that one that. And it's and it's not even so much a price thing. When you find a fifty dollar bottle that drinks yeah. like a hundred dollar bottle, it's like you've won the lottery. You that know? being said, I sold a case of five hundred dollar bottles the other day. So that's more my style when I'm taking the money from you. <laughs> oh, we know what your style is. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to be rating the uh, Invincible Chateau Lodoc AOC Bordeaux 2019, a well-deserved three sips. So let's move on to our last wine, and we're going to have Denise tell us about that one. Great. So this is the Chateau Lescano. Is it Lescano or Lescanau? I wouldn't know. I would know. call it Les Canoe. Les Canoe. Well, in Alabama, it's Les Canat. <laughs> you know? Well, it's Les Canute because it's N-E-A-U-T, and that's like how you spell beauty. So it's Newt Les Canute. Can there you go. It's a 2015. They're going right. to right. put a head out on us. <laughs> With 75% Merlot, 15% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 10% Cabernet Franc. Thirteen percent ABV. The Chateau Lescano, perhaps Lescanute. converted converted to farming in two thousand eight, and as of twenty twelve, all vintages have been certified organic through the practice of soft extractions with controlled temperatures. They create wines favoring fruit, freshness, and good acidity. The vines, which have an average of thirty two years, aging is twenty percent in five hundred liter barrels and eighty percent in concrete tanks. Well, and we saved this one for the last because we we don't want to really give this a rating because there's something not quite right on this one. I there's, think this bottle was damaged. There's I something think there's a here. damage to the bottle. We all pretty much agreed, and it's certainly not fair to um, you know rate it on what it you know what it is as opposed to what it should be. Right. It's not. I mean, we've had some cork bottles that you know you get in and taste like a pair of old tennis shoes i mean horrible um it's not it's not that damaged but no. it's it's not there's something not right yeah so hopefully they'll send us another one and we'll be able to try it again another time so well that's all the time we have for today we hope you enjoyed this episode if you're listening to us online do yourself a favor and tap the follow or subscribe button the easiest way to listen to our show is to ask siri alexa or google to play podcast sip suds and smokes we love your feedback. You can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at sipsudsmokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands of other fans on those social media platforms. You can also check us out on Instagram at sipsudsandsmokes or at mademanbob. Take, uh, do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. It's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. 
You can also check out Maury and myself on Facebook at the Bourbon Mafia. The Bourbon Mafia is a nonprofit organization composed of bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals with representation in eight states and two countries. Our members combine a love of bourbon with a passion for charitable work. We use our love of our native spirit to raise money for local and national charities through rare bottle auctions and other themed events. I want to thank our co-host. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. This was really fun. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Bob. Uh, another wonderful day in the basement. Um, I could use uh, your white towels to clean out the uh, grape juice between my toes. But other than that, everything is just fine. And thank you, Harm. Merci, Le Bob. It was excellent. <laughs> well, for Sip, Suds, and Smokes, this is Made Man Bob. We thank you for joining us. And remember, a wife is too short to drink bad wine. That's great. Thanks, Bob. And fortunately, we don't really have any. Need so. to hook me up with the distributor here, see if we can get some of these wines in, in Florida. Great no, idea. I'm keeping them all for myself. Yeah. Hmm. The heck with you. What can I tell you? I mean, it's, yeah. Plenty of palatable wines around here. You don't have to worry about that. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.